Uh, good day again. Uh, welcome to the second part of this uh, video about the MCOV battery monitor MK70. Uh, what I'd like to do now is I've, I've got a demo unit here that I've been able to get hold of. Um, I'm going to show a bit about how it operates and how this uh, unit is wired up. So firstly having a look at the uh, wiring of the demonstration unit um, which is a standard unit, it's just been put in a box that's all. Um, the two wires here uh, to go to the battery and the two wires here come out the back are designed to go to the load or the charge source or whatever and it's simply wired with the positive and negative from the battery coming in and the positive lead has been cut with the shunt installed in there and that continues out and just goes to the positive lead on the uh, the load side the negative cable comes in and uh, goes just through a fuse here just an automotive blade fuse and uh, runs out again just out straight out so it's a parallel system ideally in a normal setup you just have the shunt installed into one of the positive or negative cables um, you can see the wiring of the sensor unit which is here and you have the two sense positive and negative wires running there the two uh, battery positive and negative wires running up to there and then if we look at the installation of the uh, main unit you have just the three wires running from the sensor unit to the main unit and that goes to that plug and that uh, lets it all operate so that's the set setup of the demonstration unit I'll put the lid back on um, and we'll plug it in and get it going so over on the battery here uh, the negative lead goes in the clip and the positive lead and that should now have come to life and we should be up and running <coughs> now what it does in default mode is um, if the power has been interrupted and ideally this should be plugged in all of the time to your battery but if the power is uh, interrupted and you connect it again it'll look at the battery voltage up the top there and uh, take a, a snapshot it doesn't know at this point how full the battery is but it <coughs> when it's first connected it'll it'll say well I don't know precisely how full the battery is but I'll just take a snapshot based on the voltage in this case I'm not sure if you can see those figures but it's saying 13.02 volts and it's uh, estimating the battery capacity to be 90 percent in this case it will never go to 100 percent because it can't be sure of that it, it, it'll it'll get an estimate <coughs> snapshot from the starting voltage between 0 and 90 percent and you can see the other figures here so we have the voltage the current which at the moment is 0, 0.00 amps there's no current flowing into or out of the battery the estimated state of charge is 90 percent and the temperature which is read at the sensor unit so the unit uh, here has a thermometer inside of it is showing 22.6 degrees celsius and the reason for the temperature being at the sensor unit is that you, you, the, the unit um, takes account of the battery voltage to, to allow for how full the battery is and, and also to work out the state of charge based on the uh, current voltage on the rare times when it does that and uh, that lets us, that's got us up and running to that point. Now the unit itself to use, um, I'll try and get it out and show it to you. that's fairly visible the unit itself to use is fairly straightforward you've got four buttons exit always gets you out of whatever you're currently in menu takes you into the menus or, or accepts an entry and left and right just takes you through various options without going to the menu system we have a number of display screens and we can just cycle through them by tapping the left and right buttons so you can see from the first screen we go across and we, we see a, a reading not in amps but in watts and the other figures are the same. Then we go across to another screen. In this case, it has the volts and the amps and a fuel gauge type indication of the current state of charge. So it's showing it's about 90% full at the moment. And the fourth one has, again, the volts. This time it's in watts and again it has the fuel gauge. We have a couple of other um, helpful screens. One is amp hours discharged, which is in this cycle, so since the battery was last full. Um, how many amp hours have been taken out of the battery 
and amp hours charged is how many amp hours have been put back into the battery. So you can see how fully it's been discharged in this cycle or um, how, full, how far it has to go roughly until it's full again. The state um, shows various conditions. At the moment, the thing's only been running for a couple of minutes since we plugged it in, but it shows things like um, whether the battery is in a steady state. So if, if it's holding a consistent current, um, it shows whether it's when it's idle. So it's holding a consistent current and it's um, not currently having much current flowing in or out of the battery. It shows, importantly, it shows the charge correction status. So during the charge cycle, one of the big features of these battery monitors is that they can correct the state of charge during the charge cycle and keep the state of charge accurate and it'll show when that's in that state as well. And at any time you can be looking through the various menus, you can press the exit button and that will always take you back to the first screen. So it's just a cyclical circular set of screens with the exit button always taking you back to the start. The menus, we have data, settings, reset and about. And we'll go through some of those. Data shows data for this cycle. What the lowest volts has been, the highest volts, the lowest state of charge, which was 4.23% because we just turned it on. And uh, we can go to last cycle. Shows us data about the last cycle. Because this has been powered off, it doesn't have any information in there at the moment about that last cycle. But it does retain information about all cycles. It's been on this particular unit there's been 58 cycles. Um, the number of times in those 58 that it's gone below 75% is only six. So it's been kept fairly full, this battery. Below 50%, only three times. And below 25%, which is generally considered as being harmful for a late acid battery, only once. The charge efficiency through all of these cycles has been calculated at 0.98 uh, efficiency. And that's, that sums up the data menu. There's other options there as well, but we have settings, brightness control, contrast, you can adjust all of these. Um, the display timer. Display timer, what that does is uh, the display here uses a little bit of power. It's not, not it's, it's insignificant generally, but it's, it's worth considering. Um, it's about 10 to 12 milliamps. Um, it has a, has a timer inside of it so that if there's no activity, for five minutes or 20 minutes or one hour or whatever you want to set it to, um, the display will turn off so you just see a blank screen. It will come back to life, however, if there's more than half an amp of activity in or out of the battery. So even if the, the timer has run out and it's gone to sleep, the display has. Um, if suddenly a load comes on or a charge source comes on, it will come back to life to indicate that while that's happening. Um, and also if you press any button at any time, it'll just come back to life straight away. Battery capacity, you can set here the capacity of the battery um, to whatever you want um, between, I think it's about 15 amp hours and about 1,000 um, for the system. Um, set full should really never need to be used, but if you, if you know the battery is full, you've just dis disconnected it, then you can use set full to, to set that option. Zero amps, again, shouldn't need to be used, but if um, at zero amps flowing in or out of the system, it's showing something different then you can set that to zero, but it, once it's set, it just stays set. Shunt calibrate. Um, the shunt that comes with the unit, as you've seen before, is this unit here. It's a 500 amp, 75 millivolt shunt. Um, if you were to use a different shunt, then you can set the value inside of there, which is a relative, which is a, excuse me, which is a ratio of the, uh, offhand, I think it's the, the milliamps to the amps that it, that it um, has a ratio. There's a little formula that comes in the manual and you can set that to different uh, figures. If you shunt, the, if you get another one and it's not quite accurate to what you expect, then you can actually use that calibrate to just slightly adjust the uh, amp reading coming out of the shunt. Then we have, and that's it for the, uh, the settings menu. Reset, we can reset data, which is just resetting all of the locally held data. And you can also do a factory reset to reset it back to factory condition. And about shows us the firmware version of the current software that's installed on the unit. Those are the main screens. I'll show it in operation. Um, I don't know how well you can see that there now. Um, hopefully it's readable. What I have here is a couple of small loads. One is a uh, LED 
light and I'll just plug that in. That's the uh, LED light connected now. As you can see it's drawing uh, 0.43 amps from the battery. The volts are dropping slowly. Um, on the other screen, the next screen it shows that that's equivalent to 5.53 watts being drawn out of the battery. And we have again amps and watts and the current fuel gauge state of charge of the battery. And just to demonstrate the accuracy, I've mentioned before that it uses a um, digital signal to get between the, the very sensitive uh, shunt. The, the, these little wires here are very sensitive that run into the sensor unit. And then it sends that information digitally up to the main unit. Uh, to demonstrate the accuracy of it, we're now showing minus 0.41 amps coming out of the battery. This is a a 1000 ohm resistor, so it's quite a high resistance value, and it will draw a hundredth of an amp, if that, maybe um, slightly over a hundredth, hundredth of an amp out of the battery. If I just connect that across these terminals, minus 0.41 showing now, and minus 0.43, so that the very tiny load of a 1000 ohm resistor, and you can see it's gone back to minus 0.41 there, is enough to for it to be picked up, 0.43. And I can tell you now that if I was to put a multimeter onto that, onto those terminals to try and read the voltage that's dropping across that shunt, it would be minuscule because it, it, the full 500 amps, that's 75 millivolts. So at this range, it's a tiny amount of voltage that's being detected and shown on the display there. And uh, if I unplug that, have also a larger load that was an LED light quite efficient this one is a halogen incandescent light we'll get that going yeah I think the LED was drawing about 5 watts of power out of the system um, this one here is drawing 4.24 amps out and uh, that's over 50 watts of power being drawn out of the battery at the moment um, I think what I'll do next is I'll um, you can see if I unplug it, it goes very quickly and accurately back to zero uh, watts on the main display. So this system is tracking the critical f uh, number, which is the state of charge of the battery. That's what these things are all about, is showing us how full or how empty the battery is and doing it accurately for us. And uh, I'll show you shortly, I'll get a charge source to plug into it and we'll have a look at the charge correction and how that brings it up to full capacity as it charges. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, back again. Um, I have, this is the third part, if you like, of the, the demonstration of the MK battery monitor, MK70. Um, what I have done is I've just drawn a little bit more out of the battery. It's um, pretty close to full though. And I've now got a charge source ready to to operate, that's the uh, power supply just over there that you can see. And we'll plug that into the uh, battery monitor and the battery and we'll see how that goes with uh, getting it running. I'll just get the camera set. So currently, again I'm not sure if you can read this, but 12.85 volts, there's no current going into or out of the system. Um, it's showing it's 89.8% full and it's 23 degrees at the moment. Now I'll just get the cable plugged into the power supply. The power supply is set to 13.8 volts, so that should um, provide a good floating voltage for the battery to charge it. And you can see that connected now we're putting 3.6 amps into the battery. Okay, just an update now to the uh, charging process. Uh, at the moment this battery is being charged at, uh, as you can see, 13.6 volts, 4.6 amps uh, input to it, and it's currently 23 degrees. It's saying at the moment the battery state of charge is about 84.3%. It is actually in charge correct mode. If we look through the screens, so it's 62 watts being put in at the moment. Um, you can see about 83% uh, on the fuel gauge graph. And uh, 
at this stage this battery has been discharged by 9.19 amp hours and so far it's had 4.93 amp hours put back into it and the state <coughs> is showing steady um, even though the amps are reducing as it um, goes through the absorption phase of the charge it records as being steady because it can see a steady progression there in the um, amps over time and it's also in charge correct mode and if we look at it um, this figure here I believe is lower than what the charge correct function is, is um, indicating is the current state of charge so it's looking at the parameters and working out the time at this rate until the uh, battery gets to a full state and you can see it's bringing in the um, state of charge reasonably quickly more than you would get for just four and a half amps uh, without any correction to it so what it's, what's happening here is it's phasing in this state of charge to more closely align with the current state of charge of the battery during this absorption phase of the charge cycle so I'll probably switch it off now and we'll come back in a little while and have a look at that um, a little bit further in the charge process okay it's now about 15 minutes later um, having another look at the charge correction as the battery monitors uh, monitoring the charge process um, once again <coughs> about 3.6 amps going into the battery at the moment now down to about 49 watts and uh, it's getting fuller the, um, we've now put in 6.06 .06 amp hours back into the battery and we're still in steady state with charge correction uh, operating I think the main, <coughs> the main difference now that you'll notice is that this uh, 90.82, 83, 84 is coming in a lot more quickly what's happening is that it's now fully in the charge correct state and applying the uh, just the slight adjustment. I think this charge correction function believes that it's more like 94 or 95% full as opposed to 90% full, which is the error that's been introduced during the normal counting of the amps in and out. But this charge correction phase allows us to allows the battery monitor to bring it in very precisely into the uh, actual state of charge of the battery. Now why this is important is because a typical battery charging cycle, um, say from about half full, might take four hours and a couple of hours of that will be the bulk cycle which is where the, the current is quite high, it's bringing up the voltage and uh, it's putting a lot of current and a lot of capacity back into the battery. But the last two hours or thereabouts of the charge cycle is what's called the absorption phase and uh, in, in that phase the, the uh, voltage is being held at a steady level and the current is slowly reducing down to its 1% which is the um, one, one way of recognizing the full setting for the battery. So in this case we have a 45 amp hour battery. When the amps drop down to 0.45 or 1% of that capacity that's, um, that's a fairly well regarded point for considering a battery to be full. But before that we have a lengthy period, a couple of hours, where it's just reducing those amps slowly as it's holding a steady voltage and uh, bringing it up to a full state. And that's what, what's happening here is this is now correcting for it. Other battery monitors, they'll simply not do anything here, look for that full state and might jump from 92% or whatever up to 100% all of a sudden. This one will phase it in and give us an accurate state of charge representation at all times and the big advantage as well is that if this charge was to stop now then that figure there would be much more correct than what you'd have just from simply a monitor of the amps in and out of the battery system especially if there's a lot of activity going on with the battery. So that's a bit of a summary of the uh, MCOV battery monitor. We've seen how to wire it up and also um, various states of operation during charge and discharge in the menu systems as well. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.